and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this is a pretty quick video just highlighting some changes with ShaderGraph in Unity 2020 and above. Over the last few years I've made a bunch of shaders using ShaderGraph, I've made some Simple Dissolve, a really nice shield, some wind effects and so on, you can find the whole playlist linked in the description. And all of those tutorials are still accurate and fully working in any Unity version, there's only just a few slight changes required to make it work on the latest Unity version. There's really only one main huge difference which I'm going to cover in the end. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course which contains over 30 lectures each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so here I have my project. I'm using Unity 2020.3 and I'm using ShaderGraph version 10. And if I just go and create a brand new graph, and over here I see the new ShaderGraph window. Now there are two main changes. First of all, the properties over here on the left side. Now previously when you made a property, so let's say a float, call it amount, Previously, when you made this, you would see all the parameters right under here. However, now, as of Unity 2020, there is a dedicated graph inspector window. So this shows all of the information for the selected property. So here you still see the exact same thing. So you see the name, you see the reference, the default value, and so on. So all of the things that previously were around here, they're now separate on the graph inspector. And this one shows extra information on any selected properties. And it also shows some extra information on any nodes. If I select the node, now I see the node settings. So this is one of the main changes. All of the property parameters are in a separate window as opposed to all being on the same place. The other big change is with regards to the master node. Now, previously the master node looked like any other node, but on this version, it's slightly different. First of all, it's not an actual node. So previously you could just right click and add any new master nodes and define one of them as active. Whereas now you just have this single master stack which you cannot delete and you cannot add any more of them. So if I just go here and I type in master, nope, doesn't find anything. But again, all of that functionality still exists, except now it's on the graph inspector. So over here on the graph inspector, you've got this one for the node settings and next to it, the graph settings. One of the things that you would do by creating a new master node would be simply to change the type. So previously you would make a new master node and set that one as active. Whereas now you've got this nice drop down menu. So if I wanted to change this node from being lit to being sprite lit or unlit or anything, I just have to select it from down here and automatically updates the master node. So there you go, just like that. And all the other settings that showed up on the gear icon, they also now show up over here on the graph inspector. So over here on the surface, you can change it from opaque to transparent. You can add an alpha clip, make it to side and so on. Now, one great new addition in this new version is the fact that you can now build shaders that work for both URP and HDRP. Previously they were completely separate, so you need to make two different graphs. Whereas now you can just click on the plus icon, and if you have multiple render pipelines installed, over here you can simply add them. So you can make just one shader, just one shader graph file, and make it work in Universal, AGRP, or also make it work with the VFX graph. So this is super useful for ensuring all of your graphs work on all pipelines and reducing any asset duplication. I imagine this is going to be super useful as we go along for any asset that gets placed on the asset store. So going forward, chances are most assets will support all of the render pipelines. Now there's still one more huge difference, and this one is with regards to making some 2D shaders. Now over here I've got the dissolve effect that I made in a previous video. And this one is actually the actual file that I created in that video. So this file, this graph was created in Unity 2019. However, it still loads perfectly right in here when using ShaderGraph 10. So interestingly enough, even though ShaderGraph has changed, you can still directly load all of the old ShaderGraphs. However, note the master stack here. Look how the fragment has a sprite color with four colors. Whereas over here on the new ShaderGraph, you can see that it looks quite different. And the main difference is like I saw previously, the color had four values, so it had R, G, B, and A. Whereas on this one now, you only got three, so you only got RGB and you've got the alpha separate. So let's see what difference this makes. So if I just go into my old dissolve and I just copy all of these nodes and I paste them all in here. In doing so, now in the other one, I simply connect that one into the base color. And if I do that, everything does work. I do have the dissolve working, but as you can see, I do not have the alpha working. 
So as you're following some older tutorials and as you're recreating them from scratch, keep this in mind. The alpha channel is separate, so in this case it's super simple to solve. I've actually got the alpha channel right in here. These got all four values, so I can simply add the split node and I input this one and the split, you can select each individual channel. So for example, I can just grab the alpha channel, connect it, and yep, now this one is perfect. So this is the one big breaking change. Previously, if you fed the alpha input directly into the base color, it would automatically apply it, whereas now you need to have a separate alpha for the separate alpha input. So that's the main thing that you need to be careful with when following some tutorials with older shit graph versions. All right, so those are the changes. As you can see, they are pretty minor, so if you find an old tutorial that was made months or even years ago, you can still follow it and just apply these small changes. For example, go check out all of the effects that I made in the playlist and you can easily convert them to work in the latest version. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.